It has only been a few months since I made a video talking about gaming controversies, but 2023 has already gifted us some more incredible gems. This year truly is the gift that keeps on giving. I would not have made that video so early in the year if I knew we were going to get a Gollum game that looks like it was made in three days and was so bad that the apology for it was written by ChatGPT, and then only a few months later will be dethroned as the lowest rated game of the year by an even shittier King Kong game somehow. I feel like I covered most of the really big ones last time, but I still found three more fantastic fantastic stories to talk about, so welcome to Gaming Controversies Deluxe Edition. But before we get into it, do you guys like anime? <laughs> <laughs> this video was brought to you by Honkai Star Rail, the newest game from the same makers of Genshin Impact, if you couldn't already tell. You can choose between over 30 playable characters and engage in turn-based combat in a super epic sci-fi adventure. The game is cross-platform too, which means you can play it on mobile, PC, and PS5, which means you'll finally have a reason to buy a PS5. Plus, it's free to play. I really probably should have mentioned that earlier. Also, there is a character in this game called Dr. Ratio. So, so, and the game's got a brand new update that brings two new five-star characters. Argenti, a hot man who attacks with a spear, and Huo Huo, a wind-type support who can restore your whole team's health and use attack and energy buffs. And in this new update, you've got brand new missions, another character to try out, and the return of a fan-favorite character for you to draw. Plus, if you log in for seven days, you can get 10 free Star Rail passes that you can use to pull these new characters for yourself. So, use the link in the description and check out the game for yourself, or use the codes on screen here to get 50 free Stellar Jade for you to use in-game. I know, the things I do for you guys. Thank you to Honkai for sponsoring this video, and now let's get to our first controversy. Every year since 2017, Mojang has held mob votes for the Minecraft community to nominate one mob that will make it into the game. On paper, it's supposed to be a really cute way for Minecraft fans to sort of have, like, you know, a say in the game's development. They did a couple biome votes in 2018 and 19, but they still all added new mobs into the game, so that's basically all people were voting for anyway. The problem, though, is that the two choices that don't win are then permanently banished to the Shadow Realm to never be added into the game ever. I have no reason to believe, though, that after all of these years, because they've never said anything about it, that Mojang aren't just completely unaware of the bloodthirsty war that breaks out of the Minecraft community every year when they hold this vote. That shit is like the Hunger Games out there. The 2020 mob vote was a complete shitstorm because it essentially just became a battle on Twitter between Minecraft YouTubers to see who could influence the most fans to vote for the dumbest possible option. The choices were a glow squid, a new type of illager called an ice oliger, and a piss cow. And it devolved into this election campaign between Captain Sparkles repping the Iceologer and Dream trying to speedrun the world record for the fastest rigged vote in history. But even Mr. Beast turned to the dark side by the end, so by then it was all over. It's the glow squid! <gasps> <laughs> the funniest part is that the glow squid doesn't actually glow because Minecraft doesn't have moving light sources, so it was essentially just a retextured squid. There is a huge fuss made about it every year, just because of the nature of there being three options usually means that most of the voters are unhappy about the winner. But people finally reached a breaking point in 2023, when the vote this time was between an armadillo, a crab, and a penguin. Each of these mobs also added something else into the game as well though, so it's not even that you were just voting for a cute animal this time, but also like which feature people really wanted added into Minecraft. The penguin makes boats faster, the armadillo gives you dog armor, and the crab lets you put blocks further away. This is all of the information you are given, now go to war with each other. There was a bit of confusion about what the crab actually let you do, because on the normal description on the mob vote website, it said that it just lets you place blocks further away, but then someone went and translated the Chinese version of the site that said you could break blocks too, but then that was apparently changed like the next day, so... Huh? The point is, Mojang doesn't tell us shit, so people don't even really know what they're fighting over. While everyone was arguing about whether the armadillo or the crab would win in a fight, a much bigger storm was brewing that was the result of six years of pent-up frustration. And so began a revolution to try and end the mob vote once and for all. A group of Minecraft fans who had had enough of choosing between two equally cute animals and shit like the Iceologer decided to kickstart an uprising that made the French Revolution look like a small tantrum, promising that if they weren't gonna add all three mobs to the game, then god Damn it, they just weren't gonna vote at all. A change.org petition was even started that reached half a million signatures. I mean, it's a huge number, yeah, but when has change.org done literally anything? A lot of people were arguing about why they don't just add all three to the game, since Minecraft is a game that barely gets updated anyway. You know, if you've got modders being able to add like all three within a couple hours, then why can't they do it? Then there was a group of people telling those people to shut the f up and try to cut Mojang some slack, which just led to even more fighting. Then the outrage started getting really weird when people on TikTok started making wartime propaganda 
the posters telling people to unionize and stick it to Mojang to show it that they had had it with their shit. All of this over a crab. I just want to remind you. Did this all get a little bit over the top? Yes, absolutely. But it's also funny as hell, so please keep up the good work, guys. But the message was clear. There was a huge call to boycott the mob vote and put a stop to this community dividing event once and for all. Anyway, it got like 5 million voters, which was apparently a record number. And guess what? The fucking armadillo won. Over a penguin and a crab. God damn it, guys. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if after this nightmare, Mojang actually did make some changes to the vote next year. But after how entertaining this all was, I kind of hope they don't. Okay, our next story is going to take us to over a decade ago, when in 2012, we found out that the biggest threat to our national security would be Talking Tom. Hey girlfriend. The Talking Angela app had a few features that made it stand out from the other identical talking animal games. Except you, Ben. You're killing it, man. Bang. Fucking love that guy. She still repeats everything you say in a funny voice, which never gets old. But the biggest feature in this one was this AI chatbot that let you talk to Angela and have conversations with her. Think of it as like Cleverbot, but for furries. I, I think it was pretty basic, but I also remember spending like hours at a time talking to Cleverbot as a kid because I was really fucking lonely. So I can see why this game was downloaded like 57 million times apparently. But the beautiful thing is, it only takes one Facebook mom to not understand how technology works. About a year after the game came out, an enormous enormous amount of panic on Facebook came out of nowhere and created this entire story that the app was being used by predators to talk to their kids and get them to tell them personal information about themselves, all while they were being recorded by the camera in their phone. And the most insane claim out of all of these was that if you looked hard enough, you could even see the reflection of the person watching you in her eyes. This is not how any of that works, but please, do you think that would stop Facebook? I feel like someone was behind the eyes watching you at all times, even if you're off the app and your phone and your phone's off. You'd also have to think like, if the game was being played by like millions of people every day, wouldn't they need like an army of predators or something? Like how would that even work? Doesn't matter, because now we're making creepy poems about it that sound like shitty Dr. Zeus books. My name is Talking Angela, and I watch you through my eyes, but I'm really a creepy old man. Ain't that a bit of a surprise? Bars! Bars! <laughs> the level of paranoia even reached news channels about how the game could be hacked and controlled by someone, which mm, is literally not how it works. The kitty cat kitty app for youngsters, Talking Angela, was really a disgustingly sneaky way for perverts to spy on your kids. The app does ask you for your name, age, and interest, but apparently that's just so it can determine conversation topics. There's this article I found from 2014 that says that the game asks you to strip, but it also calls an iPhone an iTouch, so that's the level of reliable we're talking here. Angela will say cat sex is hair-raising and perfect. So glad I just read that out loud. Thank you, Talking Angela. There was even this fake article that was going around about a seven-year-old boy that went missing after playing the game that your grandma on Facebook definitely took completely at face value. But then, if you can believe it, this whole thing was debunked as a hoax, like, more than once. No fucking way. But after all of the controversy, they've since removed the chat feature from the game, which was like the only reason to play it. This entire fiasco has become Talking Angela's reputation now, even all this time later. Like even its Wikipedia page is almost entirely this hoax. And it's been condemned to be one of the topics for those god awful 3AM YouTube channels from like a few years ago. What a great way to go out. Cause they're literally just like not doing anything. Ginger, what did you mean by follow my lead? Hello? Angela? <laughs> what the freak? Okay, this last one is our least fun story on here because this one pisses me the f off. Nintendo seems to spend about as much time making sure that people aren't allowed to have fun as they do actually making games. I don't think their draconian copyright policies is really news to anyone at this point, but the warning signs have been there since the start. In the late 80s, they sued Blockbuster and tried to stop them from renting out their games because they were throwing a tantrum that they weren't getting a cut every time someone borrowed something. When that didn't work because that's f stupid, they then tried to sue them again for copyright infringement for photocopying them manuals of any games that had missing guides, which they then lost again. But this would be a really good idea of what the next 30 years are going to look like. I'm sure you guys all know that they DMCA like 500 fan games a day. Oh my god, get a hobby. They removed the Mario Kart branding from those road legal go-karts in Japan, which has genuinely ruined a lifelong dream of mine. They issued a takedown notice for a Smash tournament because they found out they were using a mod that let people play the game online because it was 2020 and during the COVID pandemic, what the f*** else were they supposed to do? And like, imagine what they do to people who commit actual crimes. 
like, for example, playing their games on YouTube. Let's Plays and game reviews have always been kind of in a legal gray area on this site when you really think about it. And I think we've all just been able to get away with it because some companies just see it as free advertising. There have definitely been some games that owe some of their massive success to having a huge presence on YouTube. They for sure lose out on people who just like watch Markiplier playing it instead of buying the game themselves. But then on the other hand, they definitely have like way more people going out and buying the game for themselves now. So it's not an exact science, but I'm pretty sure that's how we've been allowed to operate. And no one has ever been insane enough to try and do anything about it. It. About 10 years ago, Nintendo registered as a YouTube partner so they could enter their games into the copyright system and then immediately went on a rampage. So in 2013, if you uploaded a video with any kind of Nintendo content at all, like anything from a let's play to a review or even just using their music, your video would be instantly claimed and they'd take all your money. And this eventually led to the creation of the Nintendo Creator Program in 2015. Even just saying that, I feel violently angry. This was their attempt to sort of regulate online content creation with their material in it, which is maybe the worst idea idea that anyone has ever had, ever, and somehow it gets worse. The way that this worked is pretty similar to how the YouTube partner program works. Like you would have to be entered into a contract with Nintendo where for each video, they would take up to 40% of the revenue. <laughs> They gave you the option to either register your entire channel or just like specific videos, which meant that if you chose your channel and then made a non-Nintendo video, they would just take a cut of that anyway. But doing that meant that you get to keep 70% of the revenue versus the 60% for individual videos. But they also said that if you were going to do your whole channel, then any non-Nintendo videos on there would first have to be removed before you could be accepted. <laughs> What the fuck is this piece of shit? And of course anyone not in the program would just continue to have their videos taken down entirely. Fuck. Shit. How the fuck am I supposed to do a reveal then? If we can't fucking show shit! Do they have the legal right to do this? Yes. I also have the legal right to plow your mom, but that would make me an asshole, wouldn't it? Because it was the biggest piece of shit idea ever, the creator program finally shut down in 2019 after Nintendo gave up and was just replaced with some incredibly vague guidelines on their site. These basically said that you were totally cool to upload whatever Nintendo stuff you wanted now, as long as you added something to it. Unless you're IGN, I guess. But they made sure to chuck in there that they could still take down anything that was like inappropriate or harmful to their brand, which was actually not an empty threat because they sent a cease and desist to Super Mario Logan in 2021, which honestly was completely understandable. It sounds like things have gotten a little bit better and they kind of have, but it's not over yet because Nintendo still sucks my fucking balls. Like just this year, they went after Point Crow who got 28 strikes for his channel because he did some Breath of the Wild mod videos and music channels just got absolutely fucked. They sent a around 500 strikes to Deoxys Prime, and over 4,000 to Gilvasana, who had their entire channel taken down for a while. Did that mean that they were going to put their music on Spotify so people could actually listen to it? You bet it didn't. Wait, this just in? I'm getting a developing story. I've just heard that Fortnite did something really stupid again. We're going live now to Adam on the scene. Okay, so this one is only like a week old as of me filming this, but I'm adding it really quickly at the end here because I only just found out about it. And also this means that I can put Fortnite on the thumbnail. Apparently someone at Epic Games must have listened to the voice chat in their game for the first time ever and realized that they might have like, you know, a couple kids playing their game. So like the newest update to Fortnite has absolutely f everything up by introducing age ratings to certain items and cosmetics to make it more appropriate to their real target audience. So some creative maps in the game now won't let you use certain items that you've already paid for if it violates the age rating of being 10 and under in the game already rated 13 plus, which is maybe like a really dumb idea for a game that focuses entirely around paid cosmetics and is also aimed at children. Whenever you buy a skin now, it has a warning saying that you might not be able to use it in certain modes, but if you've already spent like 50 grand on Fortnite like a normal person, then that might mean that half of your inventory is just inaccessible in like half the game now. What is actually cause for a ban though is still completely up in the air though, because like the list of affected skins that they think are inappropriate for kids are ones like Deadpool, Lara Croft, Leon Kennedy, Black Widow, the Xenomorph and the Demogorgon and the Agent Peely skin because he has a tiny little holster. I mean, that could be for anything. So it's like anything with a gun or anything that has like a reference to a gun is banned, except this one and this one and okay. As well as anything they think is too scary for kids, I guess. Like the famously inappropriate for kids character Venom from Spider-Man. 
and also regular Tom Hardy. <laughs> but Doomslayer, Kratos, Omni-Man, and Michael Myers are still completely fine though, thank god. And it's not just skins too, the ratings also apply to other cosmetics like weapons and gliders and stuff just in case they weren't being dumb enough for you yet. Epic has already responded to everyone's probably very civil and polite feedback, and have basically gone and said that they know that they f***ed up, and that they're gonna fix it next year, so that in all ages maps your items will just look different to everyone else, like, you know, in every other online game ever made that has already figured this problem out. But they made sure to point out that it's only about 7% of the costumes in the game that have been affected, which is only about 132 outfits. So, you know, it's not that bad, guys. Why they're doing this now and not after they figured out a way to make all these changes first is... Don't worry about it. But for now, they have already said that they're going to be disabling the age rating in the next update. So, you know, it was a pretty fun week. I think the real thing to worry about is that they also want to record people's voice chats now if they get reported, which sounds, oh yeah, totally cool and legal, guys. Uh, anyway, that's all from me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.